everyone and welcome to a feminine moment. I'm Cherry Lynn and I'm joined today with Dixie Andalyn Forsyth and her husband, Dr. Robert Forsyth. Hi guys. Hi. How are you doing? We're here today to talk about a pretty simple subject that we hear about a lot. We want to know what your advice is for when he snaps. So particularly what we're talking about here is we had a question about my husband sometimes comes home have, after a bad day and he gets a little snappy and he's on edge. I would love to learn ways to react accordingly. So she doesn't want to snap back, I think is what right, right. she's saying. I see, to me, I think part of this is learning to change a habit. You're in the habit of snapping back. And so this is perfect for childlike response, which is um, girlishness. And we say in timeless vintage, we talk about childlike. It's basically the same thing. Only girlishness is a little bit more specific and more probably, I think, an accurate term. But I think when you snap, you have a habit of snapping. And so the way to break that habit is to get a new habit and the new habit is studying about childlike or girlish responses things you can know ahead of time if he if he snaps that means he does occasionally and so if you know he's going to snap sometimes when he does it the next time you can kind of have an idea of how you respond what do you say well can i say to me this is partly understanding men too yeah. because if he comes home and is kind of in a short fuse mode, could we say? <laughs> He's got a, there's probably something that's Because happened. me, you have experience with this? <laughs> well, there's, there's history there. You know, I know I've come home and I may have just dealt with a very difficult person who, you know, maybe, well, I don't want to get into all that. But <laughs> there's just a lot of difficult people, you know, especially in a hospital because they're not doing well. And so I may have just been through a, a rather stressful, something stressful. Mm -hmm. Now, it could be at work. Of course, it could be just driving home, for heaven's sake. And so you see him come in the door, but you don't see the, the, back, the back story, you know. What's, what's, been, what's led up to this? And so it's easy. He comes in, and he snaps, and you go, okay, you're not going to talk to me like that, you jerk. And, you know, pretty soon you're... <laughs> Both snapping back at each other, and, and they're not talking. Yeah, where does that go? Because nobody's listening at that point. Nobody's really uh, understanding each other or anything like that. So, for, you know, fortunately, you can you can maybe be be ready for this. Like like Dixie said, you can be ready for it. And you know, I know you talk about this in the book about you know dealing with his guard dog. You know, dealing with some of that stress, fight or flight response. And uh, being able to understand this and then not react to him. It's so easy to react to somebody else. If, they, mm -hmm. if they're downstairs or if they're in a, in a bad place, boy, it's so easy to kind of go down there with them. And if you can have a strategy and be prepared for this and not go down there with him, you know, he's going to notice that. He's going to feel it. Well, like you say, and this is from Timeless, um, so I encourage you to read that. But if he's if he's in that mood, you know he's in the basement, and that gives you a real advantage. You think, oh, okay, he's downstairs. Yeah. So if he's downstairs, you know the chances are that he's very easily agitated. So what do you do? And understanding about the guard dog and not going down there yourself can really be a huge advantage for you in helping him and having the right response to it. Right. Uh, you know, if you understand this, what's going on, and you can stay more upstairs, and I don't know that you have to just start smiling and laughing and try to pull him out of that, which probably isn't a good idea. Give him a little bit of time here. Well, it might make him more but, irritated. But one of the easiest things is something nonverbal. It's something good smelling in the air. I don't know. Maybe it can be, uh, <laughs> you know, that could be anything. I, I know my mother, if I came home at all stressed, she'd say, do you, do you need a hot fudge sundae? <laughs> <laughs> she always had something that was, it was almost like a nonverbal understanding. Not that I always had one. It's just that it was interesting. I think she understood if you distract me, and especially something rather powerful, 
like maybe uh, smells of food or especially if you can eat the food. So, yeah, so yeah. Being aware of what that is that he likes. Being aware. Yeah, of, it may just the smell of bacon. Right. You know, if you know that he's had a tough day or he, he said, you know, I'm going to have a big meeting today or something, you know, just kind of, you're saying being proactive. You know, and if he comes in and he smells some good meal, mm -hmm. I'll tell you, that's going to do wonders. You, it may not be anything you say or do. It may just be the atmosphere and yeah, the but, feeling of sort of a peaceful feeling or that you're steady, <laughs> you're stable. I don't know. I don't what about that? I'm what sorry. about the ladies that do that every day? Like, yeah, you know, yeah. I know for me, when my husband comes home every day, I always have food that I'm making. So number one, he's used to that. He's used to right. coming home and seeing that. And what if, you know, he's that still sick enough. and it's not yeah. enough? Well, like, I have another question. Do you smell good? <laughs> do, do I smell good? Well, I mean, I'm not true. I'm saying no. I wasn't. Wow. <laughs> I guess I'm saying no. this no, could, smell good. Yeah, this, this is another. This is another uh, sensory thing that that grabs people. You know, you may if you went over, just gave him a hug and say, "Yeah, it sounds like okay. kind of was a okay. rough okay. day or something." Mm -hmm. But you happen to smell good. He's going to notice that. And I don't know. I, I'm just saying. There are just so many possibilities here. It's not yeah. just food. It's it's anything. Staying upstairs yourself. Yeah. And, and, and if, maybe, he does, if he does something offensive, you can respond with childlikeness, and to, which tells him, "Hey, that that wasn't very nice." Without making without making it uh, escalate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You no know, sarcasm and things like that. Or you can show him something. You know, sometimes I I know when I get home if I've been wound up. I need just a few minutes to, you know, you maybe put my put my things down. Often I'm carrying something, I put mm -hmm. something down. Give me just a little bit of time, you know, before, yeah. before we start distracting to something else. But, you know, at some point when you f feel like it's a good moment, you could show him something. You know, I don't know. Maybe it's uh, or Louis just did a great uh, paper at school or. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, show them that, uh, that's your, your yeah. It's, again, it's yeah, your your son or or your daughter. You know, some new outfit you got for her. I I don't know, just something distracting like that. I it's, think a lot of ladies you know, think that when a husband comes home and decompresses like that and into you know the TV room or whatever, I think a lot of women that I've talked to think. That they get their feelings hurt by that. They right. Think, oh, they take it personally, yeah. It goes back to what you're saying. It's like, well, this is about understanding men and what we talk about in one of the chapters. I'm not sure which chapter that is in Timeless, but I know it talks mm -hmm. about, you know, going back to like, let's talk about understanding men and why he's doing that. And that, I think, helps a lot to understand that. You, part. Might, even, you might even just say, do you need to talk? Would you like to talk? Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes he will, sometimes he can no, I say, oh, no, I'm not ready to. But it's okay. You know, sometimes he is. Sometimes he is. He may just he may just re be ready to go on a rant. This guy at work was such a jerk. I'll tell you what. You know what happened? And he wa he wants to just unload. You know, and that may be part of his snappiness. But he needs to unload whatever's underneath the snappiness. Yeah. yeah. Some yeah. guys unload in their own head, and they do it inside in their cave and they don't actually necessarily need to verbalize it like we do just depends on the guy if he feels pretty safe with you he very well might if mm -hmm. he's kind of either guarded or this is too strong in other words he, he he's not sure how to get in touch with his feelings and mm -hmm. let them out yet he hasn't done that work yet he may need a little bit of time but yeah you know you know him you know you know your husband or you know someone really well and often you can kind of gauge this if you understand men <laughs> and, and also are ready with a plan and uh you know have some ideas otherwise you're going to just react and that's probably not going to be good yeah I a whole years of you reacting in a more proactive way either with understanding men child likeness combination that's going to deepen your marriage mm -hmm. instead, yes. of, instead of kind of weaken it. Now, do you think this is going to work right away if ladies are watching this and they start doing it immediately? Is this one of those things where you have to do it for a while for him to start to react better? Or do you think this is 
Yeah, so you know, his, history is always important because let's say he's come home a little snappy and he's got snapped back at real fast. Mm -hmm. Don't bring that attitude in here. You know, we don't need that. We're doing fine. You know, I mean, you know, sometimes that's what, so if he's had that for a while, if you change, he's going to go, what did you do with my wife? You know, what happened? Yeah. yeah. He, he may, you know, may yeah. take a little while. It isn't like this it. stuff is all instant. So, but yeah. if, you, if you've had a history of being sympathetic and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, you, you've got a certain, I guess you could say sort of a, a, a foundation that you can build on here of past support and understanding and sympathy for him that's going to make a, make a lot of difference if you don't then this could be a bit of a sudden uh shock <laughs> yeah yeah some patience what, yeah what's going on here yeah it takes time i think a lot of these things take time at the end of most of these interviews i think we we should say that more it's like remember that some of these things take a lot of practice especially when you talked a little you touched a little bit on girlishness and childlikeness i think that takes so much practice it Very does if you have a history of not doing it but it, again it depends on the man and they yeah. will appreciate it anyway at least you'll see uh, you should see early on that it it helps to diffuse it did the bell yeah. just ring yeah my sorry, sorry mm -hmm. my computer just rang Okay. Almost all like right. it's time's up. Okay. Um, no, thank you so much for all of the great um, comments and everything we've talked about. I think there's been some really great advice. I think my biggest takeaway is really understanding the root of what's going on. Why is he coming home this way? What think about what his day may have been like? That to me was really a big, big takeaway. Um, right. Thank you guys so much for for being here today, and don't forget to like um, this video comment we love your questions so don't forget to ask us any of your questions we can do them on a future episode and don't forget to subscribe to our channel we'll see you next time thanks yeah. bye bye, bye.